9th November 2020. We know life with COPD can be a challenge. Currently, we have no definite cure and every day task can be challenged for who are having COPD. We are privileged to have among with us two distinguished guests. One is our honorable speaker and our session will be chaired by overseas distinguished guest. Let me introduce them to you. We are privileged to have Professor DJ Christopher, Professor, Department of Pulmonary Medicine, Christian Medical College, Velour, India. He is President, Indian Chest Society. He will chair session. And we are also privileged to have among with us Professor Dr. H. M. Nazar Asansar, ex-president, Bangladesh Society of Medicine, Master, American College of Physicians, Governor, Bangladesh Chapter, American College Physician, and Sir is the Professor of Medicine, Popular Medical College Hospital. Dear Christopher Sir, I would like to request you to start over the session. Thank you, Dr. Aki. It gives me great privilege to be in your midst. I bring greetings from, uh, from my country, India, to you, and also bring greeting from my institution, which is Western Medical College, Vellore, which is in Southern India. Uh, there are a good number of patients that come from Bangladesh to a hospital. So perhaps you have heard uh, CMC Vellore, as we are called. Uh, this is the first time I'm connecting a group of eminent physicians from your country. And as I said, it gives me great pleasure. This evening, I think uh, we have chosen the right topic, the right area to focus. Today is the day we remember COPD. COPD is undoubtedly the most underrated common respiratory disease. We talk about it as if it was a rare problem. It's a very prevalent problem. Now, one of the reasons why we underdiagnose COPD is because we think only smokers can develop COPD. That myth has been burst about 10 to 15 years ago uh, by a very uh, illuminating article written by Dr. Sandeep Salvi, one of our Western Indian specialists. Uh, I think he published that in NEGM, and it was a citation classic, uh, where he described that uh, in the Western world, smoking may be the most common cause of COPD, but not so in the developing country, which, which includes your country and my country. In particular, he uh, highlighted issues like uh, indoor air pollution, uh, particularly uh, using biomass fuel for cooking is still prevalent in parts of our countries, and other forms of pollution, including atmospheric pollution, that may actually be responsible for COPD. And so we are, in fact, going to talk about a disorder that is relatively common, and all of us should be aware about it and also know how to manage it. Uh, to illuminate us on the developments in this era, in particular to appraisers of gold. Gold is the, uh, is the movement that has been designed to highlight the needs of uh, COPD globally. And so he will enlighten us with regard to the up-to-date about COPD. So without much ado, I want to invite Professor Aksan to give his lecture. Uh, good, good evening, uh, everybody. And thank you, Professor DJ Christopher from India. He is chairperson of today's program. He is renowned for a respiratory medicine specialist. Not only from India, he is globally so renowned. And he is, to my knowledge, he is a specific Indian 
Chess Physician Association. I am uh, delighted and thankful uh, to have with us. And COVID has reduced the uh, distance and we can share our experiences and knowledge uh, from far distance. So distance learning is an opportunity in COVID situation. And today's topic is uh, COPD. This is a very important topic. I'm thankful to be the physician for choosing this very important topic. Um, for defined reasons, this is uh, important. Uh, Professor Yesan, can you uh, help me whether you are seeing the slides? Dr. Yesan. Are Sir, you seeing slide the slides? Sir, let's see the slides. Sir, Okay, you just you help me. Um, Thank connect, you, sir. I was out of connection for some time. You are Dr. Akhi. Yes, sir. So this is uh, uh, today's topic is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This is a huge topic, and uh, they have said that uh, it will be covered in two sessions. Today, we will be trying to cover the um, clinical part mainly, and if possible to some part of investigation, but mainly investigation and treatment will try to cover during our next episode, uh, if everything goes okay. <clears throat> so, uh, the topic, uh, why this topic has been chosen? You, you know, uh, yesterday was the World COPD. Uh, to acknowledge this, the 19th uh, annual World COPD day, possibly in 2002, this first day was observed. So, Global Initiative uh, for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, in collaboration with World Health Organization and health workers, along with patients, they have uh, chosen they have decided to choose a date. So this is the date. This is worldwide. This is observed every year. And yesterday was the annual World COPD Day. And uh, this year team was living well with COPD. Everybody, everywhere. What does it mean? So the message to patients and healthcare providers is who? that we know this is, although COPD is not a curable disease, there is a many ways to actively, we can live with this disease. This is the important message to the patients. And this campaign is to raise awareness for interventions like pulmonary rehabilitation, physical activity, health management and nutrition, as well as highlight the importance of social and mental well-being. So that we know the definition of COPD is this is a common, preventable mostly, and treatable disease that is characterized by persistent respiratory symptoms and airflow limitation that is due to airway and or alveolar abnormalities, usually caused by significant exposure to noxious particles or gases and influenced sometimes by four factors also by lung development. So the, this is an acceptable uh, definition of COPD. So, so this is a preventable disease, also treatable. So regard why this is very important. Currently, this is the fourth leading cause. And next year, possibly, it will be the third cause, third leading cause. At this annually, 3 million people are dying due to COPD every year and presently more than 300 people worldwide are suffering from uh, COPD. So the patient's burden in the worldwide is a huge uh, regarding the patient's number. COPD is a major cause of chronic morbidity and mortal, mortality throughout the, uh, yeah, throughout the world. Globally, the COPD burden is projected to increase every year and coming decades because of continued 
exposure to COPD risk factors, particularly smoking and environmental pollutions, outdoor pollution, indoor pollution, and easy age of the patients are also increasing. So com comorbidities of patients are also increasing. This is a global burden of CPD. Currently, it is the fourth, and in 2020-21, it is becoming the third cause. Why is the burden increasing in the first wave? In from 1990 to 2020, has been found that India the burden has increased by 1400 percent. Next to India, this subcontinent is Middle East. After that is in Africa <clears throat> and in Latin American countries. So, so it is prevalence and incidence is going in a fast, fast way. So this is an alarming situation. So this is a slide showing the top disease mortality worldwide in top 10 diseases. Our disease is still at the one first position. Other diseases like cerebrovascular vascular disease, Respiratory, lower respiratory infections, diarrheal diseases. So in 1990, COPD was at the sixth position. But in 2020, it is already, already in the third position. So BART is increasing worldwide. So this is very alarming situation. Uh, the data in our country, we cannot show sometimes our data, but uh, Many diseases remain undiagnosed in the community. This is showing from USA, and 13.1 million are diagnosed cases of this uh, COPD. And it has also, in some studies, they have shown that 20 million are still under undiagnosed in CSA. Those who are diagnosed, they are living with COPD. 51% say it limits their ability to work. And 53% say it limits their social activities. So it is also a killing disease. So not only mortality, morbidity is also huge. So this month is the awareness month. The 1st November to 30th November, November is the COPD awareness month. So what does it mean? So awareness, so mean during the next few minutes and also during the next uh, episode, we'll try to say why COPD awareness very is important. It is a chronic inflammatory disease of respiratory disease. It causes structural changes, narrowing of the asthma airways and destruction of the lung parenchyma. It leads to the loss of alveolar attachment and decreases lung elastic tissue. Ultimately, there is, uh, there is also um, emphysema development. There is tapping of air into the small alveoli, <coughs> obstruction of the other processes. The loss of the small airways may also contribute to air cell limitation and mucociliary dysfunction. This is also a characteristic feature of the disease. In this slide, it shows the pulmonary and systemic manifestations of CMBD. So this is not only its problem is confined to the lung or chest. It, it is a multi-systemic disease also. So this is a very crippling mortality and morbidity due to this obviously is used. So when there is enhancement mucus secreting glands are increasing the goblet cells, there is increased production of mucus or cisputum in there is increased initially that is dry sputum, decaf, and ultimately this is a productive sputum, particularly in case of chronic bronchitis. And there is a structural changes in their airways and lead to air trapping, ultimately emphysema formation. And this increases the vascular resistance, pulmonary circulation, and it also involves the heart. So, so this skull pulmonary is one of the we know presentation and complication of COPD. It also, COPD causes muscular weakness by different mechanisms. So sarcopenia is also one of the features. There is also osteoporosis. This is wasting the muscles. And there is also fluid retention, salt and water retention, excretion 
is affected in through the kidneys. So this is a multi-system disease, not only confined to the lungs, it would also process in both other organs, vital organs also. The prevalence incidence of disease varies in the countries to countries. It is mostly we find in, in case of women, but in some countries it is also common in more women, but it is more commonly found after the age of 40 years. But in fact, sometimes may, uh, we get below the age of 40 years and sometimes there may be some family history of emphysema. So when COPD uh, below the few years, uh, it may be some, there may be family history, but usually COPD occurs after the age of 40 years, particularly in case of chronic bronchitis. So exact cause of COPD is not known, but there are some factors it is already, these are established. Tobacco smoking, this is the most important cause and this is preventable thing. And indoor air pollution, outdoor pollution, occupational hazards, these are very important. So it has been found that tobacco smoking accounts for 95% of the cases of COPD. So we must address this part first. How we can say that the smoke is related to COPD? There is a causal relationship between tobacco smoking and chronic bronchitis due to, you can, uh, uh, say from different uh, reasons, normal smokers rarely develop chronic bronchitis. Among the smokers, morbidity and mortality are closely related to number of cigarettes smoke. So we count and um, back years in this way. We know there is a reduction of cough and sputum after smoking, smoking cigarettes, stopping cigarettes. The immediate effect of the smoking is increased in the airway obstruction. This is proved. Constant heavy smoking for many years leads to hypertrophy of the mucle glands and the increase of the number of goblet cells, leading, leading to increased secretion of pus. This, this is that's why in case of the scars, they start with dry cup or dry cup, but with time there is, there is this production of the sputum. So this is a characteristic features in case of chronic bronchitis. It, it also, there is interference with the action of the bronchial cilia, cilia, cilia leads to accumulation of mucus in the bronchial tree. Why do people smoke? We know it is not good, it is hazardous, it is injurious to our health. But why people smoke? Nicotine or this physical addiction, the chemical addiction that causes withdrawal symptoms and sometimes the need for nicotine is they sometimes so smokers, they say when in certain situations with certain people, they start smoking. And sometimes they defend themselves. It is when they are upset, when they are stressed, uh, it helps in the world um, to make them happy, their smoke. So they are always you know, in favor of the smoking. So in addiction cycle, sometimes it is said when there is releases neurotransmitters, nicotine blood levels falls. It also stimulates brain caves for nicotine ingestion. Of, so it may be a cycle. So stopping this cycle is sometimes very difficult. There are a lot of diseases which are related with this. Many established diseases, some of these are here. So chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, there is, this is very related with uh, COPD and also ischemic heart disease and many cancers also. Other than smoking, there are other uh, things uh, also related to pollutions like biomass solid fuels. Uh, brother, uh, he has DJ, Christopher, he was just showing this biomass solid fuel. This is also a very important cause of COPD, particularly in this subcontinent in the India and also in Bangladesh. This uh, wood and animal dung, these are some also used particularly villages uh, for cooking purposes. Crop residues and coals lead to high level of air, air pollution also sometimes. This is an important cause. 
Pollution of the atmosphere by industrial automobile and domestic dust. Smoke fumes play also some role. And that's why it has been found that it is more common in urban areas than in rural areas. And it accounts increase in certain occupational groups also. In addition to this indoor and outdoor pollution, low birth weight and lung growth is also responsible for development of COPD in certain persons. Low birth weight may reduce maximally attained lung function in young adult life. And lung growth, childhood infections or maternal smoking may affect growth of lung during childhood, resulting in a lower maximally attained lung function in adult life. So these also may contribute to the development of COPD submissions. Is COPD hereditary? We know there are some emphysema options that uh, develop COPD below the age of 40 years in and sometimes there is no history of smoking. Sometimes there may be family history. And other one anti-protein anti level uh, deficiency also is found. So this is, um, it may be one of the facts. And other genes also have been found. So there may be contribution from some gene factors also. Airway hypersensitivity responsible, which is found in asthma, in some, may, maybe indeed it may be an independent predictor. As COPD, it has been property, maybe some relate. It is not clear whether this pattern reflects exposure to indoor outdoor air pollution, crowding, poor nutrition, infections, or other factors are related to the socioeconomic status. Infection also some plays some role. A history of severe child speed infection has been associated with reduced lung function. And susceptibility to infections plays a role in exacerbations of COPD. So there are multiple factors which are responsible for causing disease, many respiratory diseases. We know asthma, a common disease, but we, uh, we, many patients are present with asthma. But COPD is another disease. There are many risk factors which are responsible. Smoking, this is the most common risk factor in patients of COPD, other than other risk factors are some air pollutions, indoor, outdoor, biomass fuels. These are risk factors. Regarding clinical uh, symptoms, patients typically present with a combination of symptoms and signs of chronic bronchitis and emphysema. That's why these two diseases are combinedly uh, under the uh, heading of COPD or constructive pulmonary disease. Most important symptoms are cough, breathless, and then wheezing. Cough is usually worse in the morning and production of a small amount of colorless sputum usually. There is frequent infections. When there is infection, they become, the sputum becomes yellow. So this visual circle continues and it is progressive. So it, a patient develops these sort of symptoms after the age of 40 years. Uh, breathlessness is another important symptom. And after, on, after few one or two decades, patients beyond fifth and sixth decade, patients develop breathlessness of different grades, which is, which is very common in asthma in some patients, particularly chronic bronchitis and they develop wheeze also. So these are the common symptoms in, in, in un initial uncomplicated cases of COPD. We get this cough, breathlessness, and wheeze. These are the common symptoms uh, of presentation. This is a picture which shows the signs. Uh, of the, just a posture, just looking at the face, looking at the chest, sometimes it is possible to diagnose in many, many of the cyanosis and there is chest is anti-postural dermatitis increased. There is indrawing of the intercostal spaces, supraclavicular, supranostal, sternal loss recessions, accessory muscles of sternal muscles, these are prominent. So uh, these are the 
by looking at the genes from infection, looking at the face and chest and posture, sometimes it is possible to diagnose and this observation is very important for a clinician. And when we percuss the chest, there is hyperregion and lung bilaterally and uh, this lung diaphragm but is uh, pushed down and area of cardiac dullness is obliterated and oscult and breath sounds are very distant and low and uh, cardiac sounds are also distant and sometimes <laughs> there may be wheeze or ronchi and some few capitations we may get. So this is, there are some systemic features in sub-CMPD. Concomitant chronic diseases there may be, and cardiac functions is also interfered. Skeletal muscle wasting is there, and cachexia is also an important feature. So a lot of comorbidities influence in exacerbations of COPD. So infection which promote inflammation, in inform disorder, physiology, and gas uh, levels, cardiac instability. So uh, this is cycle continues in terms of CFPD. Regarding the physical signs, these are specific. There are sensitive, severe signs also. Tachypnea and disputed distress, this is very important. When there is accessory muscles are, and there is paradoxical indrawing of the muscles, cyanosis, elevated JBP, and there is peripheral edema. These are right, which signs of right-sided heart failure in case of cosmonally. So when these signs are present, possibly this is a case of severe COPD. So these physical signs are very important. Hemolysis is unusual in case of patients with seem of COPD. So uh, we know when a patient of COPD, a patient with COPD, uh, uh, hemoptysis in our country, tuberculosis is the most important cause. Other than that, bronchiectasis, lung abscess, millions we consider. And regarding the cardiovascular disease, mitral stenosis is very important. And clung is not a feature of COPD. So these are, these are the things we have to know in, in case of uncomplicated case, hemoptysis, clubbing is not usually First examination I have mentioned that chest and anteroposterior damage is increased. It becomes a barrel shaped, excess muscles becomes prominent, and there is indrawing of the interposterior spaces. So, and there may be wheezing bilateral hypertension lung field, and sometimes there may be. Uh, one kite and prolong that sound uh, during expiration with some added sounds. So, that is and one is emphysema. Chronic is defined clinically as the presence of chronic uh, productive cough for three months during each of the two consecutive years. So, this is a clinical diagnosis, there, but we must exclude other causes of chronic cough or prolonged cough. Sometimes, sub patients of uh, Bronchiectasis, they may present with chronic cough, subvariant of asthma, sometimes interstitial lung disease, occupational lung disease. So this patient, pulmonary tuberculosis in bronchogenic carcinoma, this patient may present with cough for long time, some uh, months. So uh, during uh, this clinical diagnosis of COPD, we must uh, consider this different diagnosis also. The other um, type of variant that is emphysema, this is defined pathologically as an abnormal and permanent enlargement of the air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles. So in here, their breathlessness, respiratory stress is the most important symptom. So these patients start with respiratory distress and this respiratory distress uh, gradually deteriorates. So from the very beginning, they, they start respiratory dyspnea and gradually this worsens. So in case of if we take the history, how long they are suffering from cough and breathlessness and these symptoms, 
And initially, empires of these patients starts with breathlessness. Chronic bronchitis starts with uh, with uh, cough. Chronic cough is put on. So, cause there are certain characteristics which allow differentiate between the two variants. In case of chronic bronchitis, the characteristics include following: that the patients are usually obese. Cough is the cough with expectoration of stomach. This is typical feature of chronic bronchitis. And use of accessory muscles in course of time is found. And there is some tense breath, vesicular breath, prolonged expiration, wheezing, and wrong eye. This is usually found in case. So this forms of chronic persistent asthma. And these patients sometimes may present with right-sided heart failure or pulmonary. But in case of emphysema, patients may be usually very thin and the emaciate, and the chest wall is usually barren shaped, means the posterior diameter of the chest is increased. We know the chest wall is transversely more than the five is to one, that is anterior posterior is five and transverse diameter is seven. So the ratio is five is to seven. But when in case of emphysema, it becomes one is one or more. So it becomes a barrel shaped chest. Patients typically they have no cough or expectation. So breathing problem, this is the most important in case of emphysema. Uh, chest mobility is hyper bilaterally and heart sounds are also very distant. This is an uh, important feature of emphysema. So these are the uh, difference between chronic bronchitis and emphysema. So in these cases usually develop after the age of 40 years. In case of chronic bronchitis, most important risk factor is the smoking. But emphysema smoking is maybe present, may not be in some cases. And in case of chronic bronchitis, cough and spoon is the most important symptom. But in case of emphysema, breathless is the symptom. Frequent infection is very common in the case of bronchitis. Since this chronic bronchitis case ultimately develops cyanosis, they are called blue blotters. And in case of emphysema, they develop polycythemia and their face becomes uh, erythematous, that's why they and they partially breathing, that is called pink puffers. In case of chronic bronchitis, they are edematous and styles and develops con con cord pulmonary, and sometimes there is maybe respiratory failure. In case of emphysema, there may be complications of pneumothorax. So these are the clinical we must consider as a physician in this, uh, regarding the talking about the overview of COPD. So this is, uh, that's why called uh, blue bloaters in case of chronic bronchitis. Patients usually cough and cough with productive symptoms. This is the main symptom. Sometimes there is infection, virulent is put on, and sometimes there may be breath sound is uh, vesicular with prolonged expiration with wheezy and ronchi in case of chronic bronchitis. But in case of emphysema, the patients are thin, are initiated with barrel shaped chest, with intercostal recession, supraclavicular, suprasternal recession. And the, the, these patients uh, sometimes have um, bilateral regenerant, hyper regenerant lung. So complications in case of chronic bronchitis is chronic call manually and chronic type 2 respiratory failure. In case of emphysema, sometimes they develop pneumothorax. So call pulmonary, this is a very uh, common complication and presentation in hospitals. So sometimes these patients present with right ventricular failure. So right ventricular enlargement without a failure in case of pulmonary. This is one of the uh, complication or presentation of what we can say in case of COPD. So there, this is due to some pathological changes in vasculature, which produce and pul pul pulmonary resistance and ultimately lead to uh, right-sided heart failure. 
So symptoms we mentioned, so cough with breathlessness, wheezing, and ultimately say patient with swelling of the legs, legs that is edema. So these are the presentation and these symptoms and signs of corporal manually. So our complications of COPD, uh, respiratory failure, or uh, we know respiratory failure and the uh, type 1 and type chronic COPD, particularly in case of chronic bronchitis, these patients develop chronic type 2 respiratory failure. And pneumothorax, out of the two important uh, uh, causes of primary pneumothorax, one is uh, rupture of uh, bulla in case of emphysematous bulla, and another is rupture of tuberculous focus in our country. And these are the two important causes of spontaneous pneumothorax. Pneumonia is another complication of these patients. That's why by vaccination, it can be prevented. So we will talk about vaccination during our next period. So these are the complications of these uh, patients. I have already mentioned that there are some diseases which may present with chronic cough. So uh, this cough, breathlessness, these are very common in asthma also. So, but asthma, this is a disease with breathlessness. Usually this is episodic and usually patients give a history of the patient may, might have this breathlessness since early childhood. And there may be a family history, there may be history of allergens, there may be other atopic diseases like allergic rhinitis, or eczema or um, urticaria. So, uh, but there are some variants of asthma patients, particularly chronic asthma, which may have some this side of type of chronic cough with breathlessness. So, uh, we must exclude chronic asthma. But uh, when a smoker develops this, we must after 40 years. So, asthma we can get in early and late days. Tuberculosis, this is a very uh, common disease. We must exclude tuberculosis. Some patients may give history of chronic cough. The symptom may be either dry or it may be mucoid or it may be plant or maybe hemoptosis. But there are some constitutional features like uh, fever. But uh, definitely there are investigations by which we can uh, diagnose COPD, we can exclude tuberculosis. Bronchitis is another disease which may continue for years together. These patients also present with chronic cough. It's, they may present with parulent disputum at different times, but there may be no cases. But clubbing is a very important feature of bronchitis. I have mentioned that in case of COPD, we do not get usually hemoptysis and clubbing. Interstitial lungs is this is another disease which these patients may present with respiratory distress and dry cough also. And sinuses, clubbing, bilateral capitation, these are also sometimes fears. Some disease, a cardiac disease, sometimes even some mitral stenosis patients, they may present with hemoptysis or chronic cough or breathlessness. So we clinician and a master. As a clinician, uh, and since I am an Indian, as a cl clinician, history is very important. We must take a good history, uh, how long he is in cough and breathlessness, what are the risk factors, taking the history of smoking, other uh, family history. So these are history is very important for the clinician for diagnosis. And finally, in, the, in the examination, of respiratory system and other systems. This is very important for diagnosing the COP patients and exclude other diseases. So up to possibly up to we can talk up to this time, this part we can build in up today and during our next topic we can uh, talk about investigations and treatment of COPD. Thank you very much, Dr. Aki. Thank you, sir, for your excellent presentation. We all are enlightened uh, your knowledge uh, about COPD. 
Our chat box is flooded with questions. You see, sir, uh, we have already many questions. And uh, I would like to ask uh, both you and Christopher, sir, question alternative so that we can gather knowledge from both of you. Uh, may I start? Of course, of course. I'm privileged. I'm happy that Dr. Professor Christopher is also here. He is dealing with mostly respiratory disease and definitely he will contribute. Sir, what is the usual age of development of COPD features? And what is the earliest day of presentation from your clinical experience? I would like to hear from both of you uh, for, uh, and the question about earliest age of presentation. Uh, actually, for any disease, there is no limit on ardent fasting, but it is said that it usually develops after the age of 40 years. But a patient may present at the age of, at, at the age of 50 or 60. So may in, for the initial part, they may not come to the physicians with cough, simple cough or dry cough with smoker. But when a patient of um, smoker bronchitis ultimately develops different complications and spirity distress. At that time, usually they present to uh, physician. And when they, they, in our country, in our setting, where there's corpulonally and respiratory distress, pneumonia, and particularly emphysema, where they left pneumothorax. At that time, usually in hospitals, like in government hospitals, where we usually work for decades, we found this type of case. But, this, this is a very important because in many situations, these patients are being treated as patients with asthma. So this is very important. And emphysema, what I mentioned, that only certain sections of people, they emphysema, they can develop this sort of uh, features before the age of 40 years. So usually these patients develop after 40 years. Professor, uh, yeah, Christopher, will you add something? Yes, uh, I agree with that, and uh, I don't want to repeat what you said. I just want to add that uh, the reason why it takes around 40 years uh, to develop is that the individual needs to be exposed to a critical amount of uh, uh, inciting agent. Let us take tobacco smoke you need a certain amount of exposure for that to damage the lungs enough to develop COPD. So this is around, around 15 years. It can be little more, little less, depending on people's susceptibility. So when you factor the time they start smoking, 20, 25, and then 15, 20 years of exposure, it will serve to around 40. So a good uh, rule of thumb is if someone comes with cough or wheeze when they are uh, 25 years old, you definitely don't diagnose uh, COPD. Asthma typically starts younger in age, and uh, not always, but typically it does start younger in age, whereas COPD starts usually around 40 or after 40. Thank you, sir. Uh, here is another question for Christopher, sir. What is the cause of mortality in CBD and why the mortality is increasing currently? Okay, good question. So what happens in COPD? If you look at the pathology, uh, we the airways get narrowed. Now, airways are the feeding lifelines. Air has to come into the lungs through the airways. And when they get narrowed, it becomes difficult for uh, air to come in and then uh, for oxygenation function to be carried out. Uh, so obstruction is an important reason why uh, patients feel symptomatic as well as perhaps die. So what happens if there's obstruction? Uh, there is a difficulty in oxygenation People use the accessory muscles. The lungs become hyperinflated. And a hyperinflated lung 
is not efficient in its ability to uh, act as uh, to to compress and expand uh, within the chest cave so all this happens and so patients struggle to breathe and at some point they may find it so difficult to breathe that the oxygen level may drop that the, if there is hypoxia there could be corpal menale which is right heart strain so patients these are the reasons why patients may uh, go to die but i am going to just talk about what is perhaps the most lethal part of copd which is emphysema what happens in emphysema in emphysema there is dilatation and obstruction of the alveoli the area where gas exchange actually occurs destroyed so you do not have areas for gas exchange to happen so those areas sink because they have got destroyed and so gas exchange suffers and as I, as i said earlier obstruction and destruction together cause hypoxia so what happens when hypoxia develops gradually it worsens and the oxygen level keeps dropping at a point you may develop what is called respiratory failure which means you do not your body is unable to sustain respiratory function to the point that enough oxygen is taken in these situations can be precipitated by infective exacerbations so you may already be struggling but when you get a pneumonia it becomes critical so respiratory failure often precipitated by exacerbations such as infections uh, corpal menale right heart failure these are some of the cardinal reasons why people die but they can die to many other reasons for example they have a higher risk of ischemic heart disease copd patients also die of ischemic heart disease so these are some of the important reasons why people die uh, thank you sir uh i would like to uh, ask a question for nazmul sir sir you have narrated that uh, there is association between a uh, genetic factor with copd uh, do you uh, find any uh, autoimmune connection between copd the, 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 the thank you for your excellent question but uh, whether i have said that whether there is this copd is hdd most important factors we have said that the pollution and irritation to the respiratory tract is the most important and since it is said that some lung development is important but uh, one thing is very important the uh, alpha 1 anti trypsin deficiency it has been found in some of the uh, emphysematous cases particularly when this sort of respiratory distress and emphysema develops in young patients and when there is family history and this level can be also measured so there are other genes uh, which are uh, already these are being worked out in different studies whether any gene also responsible but it is definitely proved that with this and on autosomal dominant conditions thanks sir uh, my next question is for uh, christopher sir sir which occupational group is more affected in copd and why okay uh, that is a challenging question uh, so we know that uh, you know gas gaseous and particulate matter inhalation is the inciting factor for copd so if there is any occupation that exposes people to uh, these particles uh, for example if they work in a place where others smoke a lot in a pub let us everybody is smoking they work there uh, so i am taking off the fact that smoking is not an occupation so we have to leave that out other than it uh, i think any other situation where they are exposed for example if an individual is a priest in a hindu temple uh, we have all been to temples where the there's constant smoke from perfume and various other things that they use for pujas 
uh, and so he is at a high risk a traffic constable is, a, is at a high risk because there is exhaust exhaust smoke all around him and he is inhaling that about seven eight hours a day so these are some of the then you can talk about a domestic maid uh, who works with uh, i mean if they don't work with gas stove but work with organic uh, uh, fuel such as cow dung or wood or any of these things then again that smoke can also cause COPD and that a patient can make them susceptible uh thank you sir next question is for nazmo sir sir as you already mentioned uh, COPD is progress uh, progressive disease uh, then a question from one of our participants is how do you stop COPD from progressing and what is the normal oxygen level for someone with COPD Oh, definitely, this is a very important question. Uh, it is a definitely progressive disease, and this is a chronic inflammatory disease. When there is uh, uh, always irritation to the respiratory passages, there is uh, inflammation, and uh, there is different markers are also released, and also they in- stimulate the fibrosis. and do and also a spasm of the this uh, respiratory passages of certain of the so there is a structural and change in the, uh, in the uh, respiratory passages said there is obstructive permanent obstructive changes is also leads to the uh, trapping of air in the alveoli so we know inspiration is active and expiration is active and expiration is active. so the during expiration uh, this air remains within the alveoli and ultimately is to emphysema emphysema formation so this this is a chronic and when the profession continues taking smoking so it it continues so after stopping uh, smoking immediately they, it does not return to normal level so this is a progressive so that's why this is and uh, can say that this obstructive lung diseases or two type of reversible obstructive lung disease that is as by me this is a, a progressive permanent act of obstructive disease that is peak obstructive pulmonary lung disease that is COPD we know that uh, oxygen uh, level uh, 60 is uh, level is 60 mm mercury pressure is uh, in case of or when it is less than then it is called less um, oxygen oxygen but in case of they remain habituated this uh, so there may be some difference in patient COPD and normal person thank you thank you sir here is another question for you question is sir in definition of COPD there is mentioned without obvious fibrosis if a patient came with features of copd that is fibroid findings well but with fibrosis on to tag him copd or we should search for interstitial lung disease mm, this is also a very good question because we uh, mentioned that copd chronic bronchitis this is a clinical diagnosis when a patient uh, gives his p of chronic covid is put on Uh, for more than three months a year for successive years, this is the clinical diagnosis of chronic bronchitis. And emphysema, we say the patients present with breathlessness. So these um, comorbidities, risk factors, and sim- symptoms, these are uh, to be taken from history. After that, we do some investigations. So we do some X-rays, spirometry. so we will talk a little later on so if you x ray show that is evidence of fibrosis it may come from due to different causes a patient might have some other disease so these are the two diseases in which there are in case of chronic bronchitis chest x ray may be normal but in fact there are a lot of radiological signs in of emphysema so these are mainly chronic clinical diagnosis along with some we have to take history of comorbidity risk factors and uh, doing some other investigations to confirm our diagnosis we will uh, talk about those things in, uh, during our second episode thank you 
Atul sir, Christopher sir, would you like to add something on this question? Uh, I would like to add something on the previous question. Thank you, sir. So if you allow me to share screen, I'll... Obviously, show, sir. Obviously, sir. Yeah. So I'll show a slide which will explain this well. So you're all seeing the slide? Yes, sir. It's okay. obvious. Right. So let us assume that smoking is the precipitating or causative factor for COPD. So at around 25 years of age, we reach our maximal lung function. After that, the lung function declines for all of us, which means for practically everybody on this show, our lung functions have already started to decline. That's what you see here. This is the 25-year point. And then the lung function declines uh, like this. So, uh, like, like, so it declines very slowly. And by 75, it has declined here. It will still not cause any symptoms. There is sufficient lung reserve for us not to be symptomatic. Maybe you should live for 120 or 130 years, then you may develop symptoms. A normal decline in lung function will not cause symptoms in a non-smoker. This is the smoker. His lung function declines precipitously. You can see how it drops, drops every year. By the time three years, it has dropped so much. And about 60 years, it has dropped so much. So at this point, he has developed disability from dyspnea and other symptoms here. And at this point, the lung function is affected so much that he dies. Let's say about 70 years or so, he's died. So this is what happens to a smoker. He, he should not have died here. He should not have become symptomatic here. But because of smoking, he has died. What happens when you stop smoking? So th this point, he stops smoking. At that point, the decline in lung function slows down. That means his lung function goes like this. Instead of dropping like this, it goes like this. And disability, which should have occurred here, is occurring here. OK. So if you anybody who stops smoking early, their disability, their symptoms get delayed, may not even come. So this is the importance of stopping smoking. What happens if he stops smoking after he develops disability? He's short of breath or he's coughing and then he stops. Even then, the drop in lung function slows down and it goes still there. So he, instead of dying here, he dies here. So the take-home message for everybody uh, who's watching this is that at any stage of uh, the disease, stopping stop smoking is the most important intervention to a long life. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, as you see, we are already flooded with questions, uh, but due to limitations of uh, time, we would be able to take few more questions. The next question is for Nazmul, sir. Why cough is actually worse in the morning in case of COPD and why cashew occurs? Hello? Uh, mm. First part of the question is that uh, in, I have mentioned that due to irritation of the respiratory passes of the mucus gland. Do, do you hear me? Do you hear me, Dr. Yes. Arthi? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Do you listen to me? Hello? Sir, you are audible. Please continue. Hello? 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 <clears throat> sir, you are audible. Please continue. Uh, due to due to constant yeah, due to constant 
Hello. Hello. Sir, do you hear me? Due to constant irritation that I, I listen to, I hear you. Okay, sir, you are audible too. Please continue. Uh, due to constant irritation of the respiratory passage, there is hypertrophy of mucus glands of the respiratory passage. And there is also increase in the goblet sense. So these are the uh, sessions produced in the respiratory passage. So when we sleep, this mucus and the secretions accumulate in the respiratory passage. And also there is the function of the cilia. So there is, uh, we know that cilia, there is a beating of the cilia. There is this, this um, cilia dysfunction occurs also in with the smokers. So during sleep at night, there is accumulation of this, uh, this secretions in the respiratory passage. When we wake up in the morning, early morning, this, uh, we, there is expectation of sputum in the early morning. And this is an important feature in patients. But there are other diseases where there is a morning sputum in case of bronchitis, lung issue, but due to by other symptoms and signs, we can differentiate also those diseases. So during the case of patients of COPD, and the morning is put on, this is an important feature. Thank you, sir. Here is another question for Christopher, sir. sir. Hello, sir, do you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Sir, how can we diagnose asthma CD overlap syndrome? Okay. Asthma COPD overlap uh, syndrome is not used anymore. Asthma COPD overlap syndrome or a cause of the uh, name given to a disorder where there are features of both COPD and asthma. So in due course, they, they realized that it's not a syndrome. So they took off the S. So they called it ACO, asthma COPD overlap, without the S. And now uh, they they again it is becoming less important. And they say that COPD people can have features of asthma. And asthma people may have features of COPD. So just treat it like that and don't make it an entity. Anyway, so how to diagnose patients with features? Patients with COPD who have featured asthma. That is the question. So the most practical answer to this is that uh, the GINA guidelines, uh, which is the asthma guidelines, and the COPD is the gold guidelines, they gave a table where the features of the patient are put down. And accordingly, if there are more features which favor COPD, it's called COPD. If most of the features favor asthma, it is called asthma. If the features are kind of cool, there are features of COPD, there are features of asthma, then it was called ACO, ACO. So that is the way to diagnose ACO. Now, what is the important? I think the question to ask is, the, what is the importance of this? Now, patients with COPD, if they are... Uh, patients with asthma, if they're wrongly diagnosed as COPD, then you not give them inhaled steroid treatment. COPD is a relentless progress, progressing disease, but asthma can be modified by inhaled corticosteroids. So we do not want to deny asthma patients inhaled corticosteroids, which is important for them. That's why in OPD patients, we try to identify who has asthmatic features uh, as far as symptomatology is concerned and who also may have eosinophilia. And these are the people that may benefit from inhaled corticosteroids and they should be given that treatment. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Here is another question for Nazmul, sir. Sir. What is the specificity and sensitivity of spirometry to diagnose COPD? I think we will discuss it in our next next episode. We, we have the investigation and treatment part for our next part, hopefully. 
Okay, uh, dear participant who asked this question, inshallah we will able to hear from sir uh, in next episode. Sir, we had another question in their in association uh, with uh, Corpal Monelli and uh, sir, uh, the question was uh, why there is no Corpal Monelli in emphysema? In case of chronic bronchitis, we get uh, corporal pneumonia because when there is uh, hypoxia in the patients with chronic bronchitis, there is vascular regions increased and there is pulmonary hypertension. So when there is pulmonary hypertension, right ventricle enlarged, you know, uh, corporal means when there is right ventricular enlargement due to lung or chest pulses. So in case of uh, chronic bronchitis, there is uh, hypoxia, persistent hypoxia in, in later stages, and this leads to vascular resistance and pulmonary hypertension. And these patients ultimately develop ventricular failure in edema and GBP raise. So these patients, we call it then called pulmonary. Uh, it was our last question to DJ, sir. Sir? Uh, is there any relation between COPD and bronchial carcinoma? Good question. Uh, the short answer is yes. First, we have to state that they are caused by the same etiologic factor. Both are caused by smoking and perhaps exposure to other uh, extraneous uh, agents. And that is the important relationship. So people who are exposed to the to a factor that causes two diseases are more likely to have both the diseases together. So that is one factor. But quite apart from this, there is a clear association of so two. Uh, I mean, of COPD being higher in patients who develop uh, lung cancer. So even though they are, I mean, for the same amount of exposure, if they have COPD, they have a higher risk of, uh, of uh, lung cancer. So that is true. So COPD and uh, cancer, they, they have a higher chance of happening together. Thank you, sir. Uh, Nazmul, sir. Uh, we are really delighted to have both of you along with us. Would you like to uh, express your feeling about this session? Uh, definitely. I am uh, thankful to BD Physician for arranging this program. This is self-talk and academic session. We arrange this type of session mostly for uh, residents and early career physicians. And definitely it is all helpful for all clinicians. So I want to express thanks to the physicians, and this is adding for all listeners. Thank you very much for your uh, participation, and I am also thankful to Sir DJ Christopher uh, for participation as working as chairperson of this session. He has committed laws. He has working in just as in this field for a long time, and has a lot of contributions in the. Thank you, Professor DJ Christopher, for the, uh, for remaining chairperson of this session. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. We are eagerly waiting to hear from you in our next session. Dear thank audience, uh, it's time for a vote of thanks. We all know our today's scientific partner is Sky Pharmaceuticals, and I would like to invite Mr. Akhtar Alam Khan, Marketing Manager, SK Pharmaceuticals. Mr. Akhtar Alam Khan, can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving me the floor, respect doctors and dear participants uh, who are watching. Assalamu alaikum and very good evening. I am Mohammad Akhtar Khan, Marketing Manager of SK Pharmaceuticals Limited. And I am very glad to welcome you to the virtual inter international winner on occasion of World COPD Day. I would like to express my sincere admiration and gratitude to the chairperson of today's session, Professor DJ Christopher, who is the president of the Indian Chess Society and also serving as the professor of Department of Pulmonary Medicine, Christian Medical College Bellor, 
you for making time from your busy schedule for joining here with us. It's a privilege to hear the discussion today from a president of Bangladesh Society of Medicine and professor of medicine, Popular Medical College and Hospital, Professor A.H.M. Nazmul Hassan. Every year, as World COPD, it is observed to raise the awareness about the chronic inflammatory lung conditions. Today's presentation was also was an overview of COPD, and I am sure that the audience would be benefited from the presentation as well as the question and session. Being of the leading pharmaceutical companies of Bangladesh, SKF has been committed to ensure the health and safety of the doctors since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. At SKF, the product quality is considered as the top most priority, which has enabled most prestigious and regulatory approvals such as UKMHRA, TJ Australia, and EU EMA. The knowledge partner of today's session is SKF's SME Prazol brand, that is Isural Maps, which is the product of joint collaboration between SKF and world famous in Germany. Isural Maps com comprises 400, 400, 600 micropillars, which ensures faster action with longer duration action, duration of action, and has dosing convenience. It can be taken with or without food. With this note, I would like to conclude my part expressing my gratitude to BD Efficients for giving escape the opportunity to be the part of today's scientific webinar. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, thank you. Thank you. For uh, helping us with this scientific session. Dear audience, today is 19th of November, and this day is a special day for all of us. Today is the birth anniversary of Indira Gandhi, ex-Prime Minister and central figure Indian National Congress. Happy birthday. Now it's time to hear from Christopher, sir. Sir, please mop this session. How do you feel about this session? Uh, I didn't expect to be called to speak anyway, now that you have asked me to speak. I think it was a very uh, stimulating session at a very appropriate time. Uh, it is good to remember this important disorder, which people do not know how to diagnose and how to treat appropriately is something that should be done more to educate physicians. And uh, Professor Aksan has done a great job uh, in laying the fundamentals uh, up to diagnosis and treatment, which he will do in the next session. So I'm sure that's something to look forward to. So it has been a privilege to be part of this. And as you rightly mentioned in your closing remarks, this, is, this was the birthday of uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, former Prime Minister. She is not only important to us, but she is also important to you. Uh, you may recall that she, uh, she supported your movement towards freedom. And so I think good time to remember her as well and the two countries which have a mutually beneficial relationship. Thank you very much for inviting me and audience for your patience. Good night. Thank you, sir. Dear audience, it was an excellent elaborate presentation regarding COPD. And BD Physicians has been arranging such sessions from their beginning. We all are delighted and enlightened from such knowledge sharing from home and abroad. We would like to uh, hear a few more in our next session, and we will be eagerly waiting for the next one. Thank you all for being with us. And you all are welcome for our nation. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, I thank wish you, you good health. Professor thank Christopher, thank you. Hope, hope to see you again. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank Professor you Christopher, sir, uh, we, we want to see uh, we have to see you the next session, our concluding session. Hope that you join with us and we'll arrange that next month. Sure, and shall we certainly I'll happy to happy to join. Happy to join. And so and you have to also prepare for us something. And I think you will let us know uh, during that presentation that what you're gonna present for us. You tell me what you want, I can <laughs> you have to say what is important for your physician, I can do that. So uh so Nadmul, sir, do you have a suggestion? No, no, I do not have any suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
सर सर आसा देर इज ट्यूबरक्यूलोसिस इंटेस्टिशियल लंग डिसीज सर इंटेस्टिशियल लंग डिसीज आई लाइक टू हियर शो क्या already there is suggestion bronchial carcinoma as a tuberculosis already in our suggestion okay sir inter because uh, we have already there is a presentation on tuberculosis by professor ema geology sir sir if you do interstitial lung disease that will be our one sure i can dr a dr a san you wanted to know what type of presentation you expect from professor christopher